Welcome back. In this week's video, we're going to go with one of these behind the scenes -y kind of commercial photography jobbies. We're going to do it a little bit different this time. We're going to try and give you more information on the shots, the settings, the lighting, how I came to that idea, and how we built the shots, some styling bits and pieces, all sorts. But because we're going into more detail, I'm going to have to throw some other bits out and they're going to be a separate video. So the retouching, the colour grading, the mood board, all that will be out in a separate video. So do hit subscribe if you want to see those as well. So here's how we're going to tackle this. We're going to go shot by shot. We're going to start with the first shot of the day, and that was the bagel with the cream cheese, salmon, and dill. Now, this is part of a three-shot series, so I had to make sure that how we lit this image was going to work for the next two images as well, which was a sort of stacked-up bacon sarnie and a burger with bacon and an egg with the egg porny yolky sort of thing cascading down. So let's talk lighting first of all. Lighting-wise, I lit it with my hazy light, which is basically a square softbox. And we pumped out quite a bit of light for this, probably a thousand watts, I guess. And it was coming in camera left. Camera right, we had a foam board, which is like a bit of white board. And we put some tin foil or aluminum foil, if you remember, aluminum? We call it aluminium. Anyway, aluminium foil on the side, which had crinkled up first to give it a bit more punch because meats like beef, really respond well to a specular highlight coming in. And obviously with the hazy light, that's a diffused light source, so just to try and pick it out a bit. And then to get even more depth into that lighting and really see into the sandwich a little bit more, we had a mirror and we pointed it up and just reflected a bit of light from the same side as that reflector. Now this might seem like a lot of light going on, but you have to remember everything's very close here, so the fall off is very fast. We're only really lighting the front centimeter of the sandwich or burger or bagel in this instance. And also because we're shooting, the, the whole aim of this was to be really tight. We didn't want to see the top and bottom of the sandwich. We just wanted to see the filling and the bread around it. So because of that, we had to be in so close. I was using my 100 millimeter Zeiss lens, sitting around F13, just to get the smallest bit in focus. Now, yes, we could have focus stacked it, but focus stacking has a real aesthetic. And I was trying to avoid that. I didn't want that hyper realism going on. We use focus stacking a lot, but just because there's a tool that you can use doesn't mean you should use it. It should always be based around the aesthetic you're trying to achieve. So coming into the first shot, firstly, the camera had to be completely level. It had to be coming in at eye level of the sandwich. So the sandwich is ahead of us and we're looking straight into it. We couldn't be angled up, angled down, bit to the left, bit to the right. It had to be completely straight on. So we set up a plinth and we did the standard. Every food photographer has this shot of bread. Sometimes you put bread inside the bread to get the height right for the composition. We popped it down and we started building the shot. So we light the bread first of all. Now with the bagel particularly, I wanted to have that real deli feel to it. So you have to imagine the lighting it's under, it's that hard, harsh light where the bread sort of, it's not the most flattering light, but food photography isn't always about the most flattering light. It's not always about the most flattering photo. We're trying to portray something here. And with these burgers and it's that fast food lighting, it's that sort of hot spots and real like burnt, highlights and it's quite difficult to produce that with a camera bizarrely enough it's easy to overexpose a whole image but to get that crisp burnt highlight looking kind of cheap is quite quite tricky i thought it'd be pretty easy but it wasn't so i zoomed my head all the way in to make sure i've got that hot spot in the middle of the softbox which is kind of the exact opposite of what the hazy light tries to achieve but you you can kind of get around it with a zoom feature and then it came to building the shot. I'm going to get like a little bit of a lapse coming up here to show us the building of the shot until we got to our final image. It didn't take us too long. This is about a 45 minute image. And then I really want to talk about how it ended up, what I do like and what I don't like. So once I load this monstrous 50 megapixel TIFF, there we go. Let's have a look. So this is the highlight we're talking about, this top left hand corner. This is to sort of show you that shot. You know when you get, you get the glass front and the bagels all stacked up under them, they have that horrible fluorescent tube across the top. I kind of wanted a bit of that feel to it on the bread, just so you know it's a bagel, because it's hard to know it's a bagel. If you've ever been um, Shoreditch down Brick Lane, there's this brilliant bagel shop there. And it's that sort of aesthetic I wanted, but then I didn't want it to carry on through to the salmon, which Moggy ate at the end. Now the salmon is nicely layered. We've got the cream cheese. We have to be quite fast. Now in retouching, I'm going to remove this one bit of pepper, I think it is just here because I feel that that's a little bit awkwardly placed and I have no qualms with doing that. Likewise with a bagel, this top left here is a bit of a finger indentation. I'll be getting rid of that. And then the dill I like, it, it sort of protrudes through. It's a good look. The salmon was the cheapest salmon we could buy. It was about 75% cheaper than any other salmon in the shop. So I was pretty pleased and Moggy had a good lunch. But generally speaking, this is exactly what I was trying to achieve. 
I feel like we did a good job here. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you think you should have done something differently with it as well, whether or, or what you'd have done differently. And also, you know, just tag me on Instagram if you've got your own shop, which you think this, this is how I'd have done it. And then next up, it went to do a stack of a bacon sandwich. This is a BLT. I've seen these universal bacon, lettuce and tomato. It's like a classic in the UK. Get a bit of mayonnaise, a bit of tomato sauce sometimes. Pretty good sandwich. We went for mayonnaise on toasted bread, went for cheap white bread. So we wanted again to have that sort of greasy spoon sort of vibe to it but whilst photographing it in a very different context. I shot this one in portrait because of the height. There's no way we could make it work with the landscape. The, the ratio of the sensor just doesn't work. So we flip the camera around, got that nice high stack, and you'll see from the styling, it's very, very precise. We've got the tomatoes nicely layered over one another. The bacon is crisp on the edge, but we didn't go for crispy all the way through. It's sort of a, it's always a tough choice. Now, I like my bacon slightly cremated. If this was my sandwich, it looked nothing like this. I like it burnt to a crisp so you can kind of snap it. Um, but we can't always do what we want. Now we've gone for spritz as well. This is a glycerin and water mix. I don't know what the ratio is because it was Ellie the stylist mix. And I don't like asking because it's kind of top secret stuff. Um, but there we go. I think we did well on this. However, I think we should have stacked the sandwich more. I think we should have had more filling in there. The black gaps, I'm not sold on them. I think maybe if they're more airy, it would work, but then that takes away from the style of lighting I was trying to achieve. So. It's not for the print book, it might go on the website, it's definitely gonna be on the gram. But yes, that, that's my big plight with this one. We should have stacked the sandwich out more and had more in those gaps. And I think it should have been more like a New York deli sandwich style with it all like protruding out. But then maybe that goes against what we we're trying to achieve in the ethos of the sort of greasy spoon thing. So let me know what you think again. But that's how we went about this shot. F13, 100 mil macro, 100 ISO, 125th of a second. Shutter speed's a moot point because without the flash going off, and it's the same lighting setup as before, the room is pitch black anyway. And I often do that. I turn my trigger off, just take a shot to make sure we've got no ambient bleed coming in from anywhere because we don't want any of that. So on to our third and final shot of the trilogy. This is the burger with the bacon, the beef patty, the big sort of egg. There's no vegetable here. There's, there's no tomato. There's no lettuce. This is like a heart attack in a bun kind of thing and that, that's quite deliberate as well we had the fresh stuff in the other ones this one needed to be dirty really dirty sort of food and you'll see from the build laps and some of the behind the scenes footage it's quite tricky and if you look at the burger it's sort of actually built like this to look like it's flat front on there's a few optical tricks we have to go for and using the 100 millimeter lens lets us compress all of that so it looks natural with a 50 millimeter lens it might look like it's towering over a little bit but the 100 it's a good focal length. Somewhere from 100 to 200 is great for this sort of work. Now, it's pretty good, but it's not perfect. The bun was too light. I should have got a darker brioche bun than the one I bought. That kind of bugs me. I love the egg. I love the yolk. The bacon's great. The, it's a very British way of cooking. If you go to a British cafe, that's kind of how your bacon's coming out. The burger, should have bought a bigger burger, gutted. I bought the biggest one I could see in that shop, but I should have gone somewhere else, but because of the whole pandemic scenario, didn't really want to go to too many supermarkets. I did the whole shop in one go in a couple of hours, trying to touch as few things as possible. I also think the burger was about five days gone off by the time we got around to cooking it. The tomato sauce is great. We use really cheap tomato ketchup because it's so dark and rich and vibrant. And the problem with red meat and red sauce is you can't play with the hues without masking every individual bit out. And I can't do that. Well, I can do that, but I don't want to do that. It takes too long. So it just helps us. Getting it right in camera is useful for me because it saves me time. But if we needed it perfect, I'd get a retoucher in and we'd do something a bit different with that. But this I'm happy with. There's a bit of retouching that needs to be done on the burn. And again, I've not done the retouching, but I'm running out of time and I've got to film this now because we're shooting. We've got something daft like 10 day shooting coming up. Um, plus a lockdown. So we'll see how that pans out. But yes, it's gonna to go to the retoucher to have a bit of a smarten up, especially on the bun. I'm happy, I like it. The egg, the egg is just on the edge of burns out on the left hand side. I might burn some of that back in again with a brush. But yeah, happy with that one. So whilst we're on that sort of setup, we went in to do a pavlova, which is a, a meringue, some whipped double cream and then fruit on top of it. And the reason we did this is it wasn't part of the plan, but the fruit in the shop, especially the blueberries, looks so good that I couldn't help myself. The meringue is shop bought. It's just a cheap sort of like, you get several of them in a pack and we just popped one down. This was a lighting challenge. We've got dark blueberries and very bright near white, but then an off-white cream. So we've got a white meringue an off-white cream, and then the very dark berries. So lighting this was tricky. We had to raise the mirror onto a box that was at the same height, so we could just get the mirror's reflection to grace across the fruit without touching the rest of it. So using a normal reflector, let me show you. So 
So using a normal reflector is kind of a blunt instrument. It's just like reflected or not reflected. There's not much you can, it's quite, it's quite big. Whereas using one of these, you can really sort of carefully point where the light is and isn't. And they're very useful. And you also get the, the oh gosh, that's a bad reflection to see. There we go, this is the magnified side. And this is kind of the standard size. They, they're very useful. They cost like two pounds a pound. You get, them, get a cheap one, get lots of them though. They're very good. This I'm happy with, but it wasn't part of the shoot brief. Retouching wise, there's this bit here of cream, which is sort of separated a bit, which needs a bit of a tidy up. Catch lights are nice. The spritz on the fruit is beautiful. I'm very happy that I managed to get all the tones of the white in there as well. I don't quite think it works with my portfolio. It won't go in my print books. It's the wrong sort of thing, but for a bit of throwaway content, or if anyone ever needs me to show them that I can shoot that sort of stuff, it's good to have in the back pocket, isn't it? So, nah, not my cup of tea, but it took us a few minutes, so why not? And then we moved into what was more traditionally my sort of style. And this is the very graphics. We had a solid plain blue background, a fork held up by C stand. Then we had a sausage on top of it, which was salmonella -y, food poisoning raw on the inside and painted on the outside dollop of tomato ketchup and the lighting was kind of hard for this we had to go in hard but also we didn't want to get too much of a reflection on the fork so i chose a particular fork which is very matte in its very nature and that really helps us and obviously you're going well why don't you just use a scrim and get that gradation but the gradation is too polished for this sort of vibe and aesthetic so i wanted to have the hot spot but if i did it on a high chromey glossy sort of fork it'd look awful so that's where we sort of bring props and lighting together to get the rise aesthetic we then lit the background very evenly we had to give a good separation now you can see there's a blue color cast on the bottom of this image and i'm going to be taking that way in post i took a second shot with a black piece of card behind and underneath to get rid of it i'm going to blend those all together in post when i get a moment now, this shot here kind of irks me. I was shooting a time lapse on this lens here, which is a 35mm for the behind the scenes footage, and I only had the 50mm as my widest lens available to do this. This would have been better with the 35mm, and I kick myself for just not changing the lens on the time lapse, but I was kind of committed to the time lapse, and anyway, more for me. We wanted the distortion, so the camera came up really close. The closer your camera is to a subject, the more it distorts. The wider the lens is, the more you can get in, so the closer you can, the wider. And uh, Anyway, there's a whole different video. The 35 even closer would have been better. But I'm happy with it. It does the job. It tells the story. It's a British banger with some tomato ketchup on top. It looks right. It's exactly what we wanted to achieve, but I just wish I'd have gone for that wider lens, and that would have really set off this image for me. So this shot's kind of a classic. This is your multiple items in a straight line. Let me just show you something. When you're doing, when you're doing shots like this, you want one of these. This is a laser tool. And this laser is kind of, if you can see that, you get the lines and you put everything along the line so it's perfectly symmetrical. And then you ever so slightly knock them all off center in different directions, because if it's too perfect, it looks like you've used the clone stamp in Photoshop. So there's a fine line. Now, sometimes that does actually work quite well with certain things. If the objects themselves are very precise and you want that aesthetic, there's nothing wrong with it. But for this particular instance, that's not what we wanted. Now, normally I'd fill the whole frame with something like this, but the negative space kind of works because of the pastely hues being a real major part of the image. The bite out of a center one, that kind of works. I don't know if it's too gimmicky. I don't know if the punchline's too in your face and maybe that we've got other options anyway now the donuts themselves are super cheap ones ellie whipped up some nice icing she piped it on top and it looks looks way better and the main time in these sorts of shots is the building of the shot and again you want to use a spirit level as well you want to check the level of the floor work out how out it is and then match the camera exactly the same i've gone for a 50 millimeter lens so that the camera's not on the ceiling and it's a manageable height from the floor and then it was just a Broncolor hazy coming in, giving that nice shadows. We moved it back a little bit, so it had a good amount of distance. No reflections, no mirrors, no scrims, nothing like that. Very simple. It's all about the right colors, the right shapes, and the direction of the shadow. You'll notice a lot of the things I light from the left. And the reason I light from the left is because it's a more logical way. You read left to right, you look at the brightest point of an image first, so going in that direction is most aesthetically pleasing. If you go the other way, it kind of adds a bit of suspense and edge to the image. And if you go bottom to top, it's kind of, it's awkward. It can sometimes work in very strange circumstances, but generally speaking, it's not the way you want to go. Top to bottom works as well, because you kind of read down a page, so that makes sense to us. 
And you'll probably notice if you go and find some images from countries where they read right to left, that's the way they light as well. And we've shot campaigns where it's got to go to both these sorts of countries. And there's some clever stuff that we do to make it work within the budget and time constraints. Now there are two other shots we did as well, and these are with chicken dippers. And I did these because our youngest loves chicken dippers. Um, it's his favorite food. Chicken dippers and dip dip, as he calls it. Anyway, we got these together. We were going for very graphic. I was kind of imagining if McDonald's went a bit cool. Well, one of my sort of things that I want to achieve in my career at some point is shooting a campaign for McDonald's. And I know a lot of people like, why McDonald's? But like their ad campaigns are just brilliant. So I'd love to shoot a McDonald's. So anyone listening to this who works for McDonald's, I want to shoot one of your campaigns. So just hook me up. Anyway, this is Moggy going in for a chicken dipper. This wasn't the plan. The plan was the chicken dipper by itself, but then I put Moggy on the table and it kind of worked. And sometimes you just go with it. This was the 100 millimeter. It's not top down, it's not 45 degrees. It's that kind of awkward high angle and it works for certain things. Lighting wise, we went for the Broncolor Hazy, almost exactly where the camera is. And it was just bare bulbed with the big reflector on there. I think it's called a P70 or some P, I can't remember. I never know what kit's called and people always get mad at me for not knowing what it's called. I know what it does, I just don't know the name of it. The big dome thing, specular, hard, pretty good for this sort of stuff. Really brings out the texture in the chicken nugget. The catch light is very, I was gonna say pow, but that's not a word. It's just very in your face. The shadow, if you were to put it to a slightly different angle, which we'll see when we go through the shots when I was trying that, it's very hard, it's very long, it's very hot, it's, it's deep. The umbra to penumbra is very rapid in its fall off, if there is any worth at all. And this I like, and I like both versions with and without Moggy. This is going to the retoucher to neaten up the paper. I don't have time to do that sort of stuff. It ha and I'm gonna do a whole video on how I brief a retoucher, find a retoucher and all that sort of stuff. And those you go and work, it's not your own work if you don't edit it. In the food world, most of our work is not entirely our own work. We have a home economist, a stylist, a lighting assistant, an assistant. We'll have a digital tech who checks my focus. We'll have a retoucher, like someone else has the cut. I am here to make sure it looks good. I'm here to execute it well. All the technicalities of it, I'm getting that sorted and managing the team. It's a bit of a project management job in many ways. So I have no qualms in getting someone else to retouch my work. I don't remember the last time I retouched a big job, which is good because I'm so slow at it. Like the, I'd have to, the, the pricing would just be astronomical and not worth it. So we get someone who knows what they're doing. There's professional retouchers for a reason. And it's a reason why there's always a budget for retouchers in a shoot. Anyway, I digress. Now, what I really want to show you is the last shot of the day, which is awful. And let me talk to you about it first, because we got to the last shot of the day. We were tired. We've all been suffering a lot recently with everything and working's hard and you know, the shoot was a while ago, actually. It's much harder now because we've got like everyone here in masks with taped off floors and all the rest of it. But right back then, we'd just come out of that side of things and it was starting to get normal again, but we could see very quickly. Anyway, everyone was tired, everyone was exhausted. It was only the two of us working with Moggy, who is not as much help as you'd expect. And yeah, we were tired, let me show you it. We're going for the same thing as the donuts. My computer's down here, by the way, if you're wondering why I'm looking in this direction, this is, this is where the computer be living. I'm kind of embarrassed showing you this. Now, obviously it's underexposed, but we had to underexpose it to push it in post. This is like straight out of Canva. It just didn't work. It looked bad, we scrapped it, we sacked it off. Might see if we can fix it in post, do something to it, maybe, maybe not. Anyway, if you see it on my Instagram, you'll know that this is the shot we fluffed. And it, we, didn't, we didn't really mess it up. It's fine, we chose the wrong color background, the lighting angle wasn't quite right, the precision is obviously all over the place. We were just tired, it happens. It was the end of the day, there was no one there telling us we had to get it done, so we just aborted. And that happens sometimes, and it's fine. We all take bad photos. The thing is, you just shouldn't show people them, and I probably shouldn't be showing you this, but we're all human, I want you to know that we all make catastrophic blunders on these things. So obviously this isn't everything that goes into a shoot. For me to do that, this video would be a week long. So what I am gonna do is put separate videos together, one on color grading, one on retouching and working with a retoucher, one on coming up with the ideas and the concepts. I'm also gonna talk about how we choose the camera angle. All these different things will be out in different videos. So if you wanna learn about that, do hit subscribe to get the notification when they do eventually come out. I've already started filming them, but life's a bit hectic at the moment. So my schedule of doing two a week has gone completely out of the window. I hope this has been of use to you. If you did like it, do hit the thumbs up because it helps more people see these videos, which in turn gives me the funds to make more of these videos. And if there's anything you wish I had have explained in this video and had have gone through, let me know in the comments below and I'll try and add it to my schedule of videos to make.
Well, that's it for Moggy and I, so I'll see you all later. And also, look how much she's grown. Isn't this good? We've been eating lots of chicken, haven't we? Yeah, she likes winking. Just gonna eat some more chicken. <laughs>